Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are headed to meet his friend Logan and sort of drop off Gabriel so that he can spend the night and have a good time playing with his friend. And then in about like three or four days, he's going to come over and sleep at our house. Yes. And so this morning, Molly went outside and I know you really want to know like the whole puppy update, but like she didn't have any accidents in the house, in her kennel, nothing. She went outside and she did her business. She even met Yoda, the cat. It was kind of a tense moment, but um, <laughs> she was, of course, she was like, oh, this is cool. And Yoda was going, what is that? <laughs> it was funny, but he didn't lash out at her or anything. So I think that they'll be able to coexist peacefully, or at least, you know, Yoda's probably going to uh, stay away from her, if I had to guess. He is dropped off. We started talking after my first clip, and it was a very funny yet sad conversation. He goes, you know, the last time I spent the night at Logan's house, gosh, that was a while ago. And I said, yeah, it was a while ago. He goes, yeah, that was back when times were a lot simpler. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, these kids are gonna have stories to tell their kids and grandkids. Why must I die this way? <laughs> Horatio and I just went to Target. Oh, there is weather moving in. All right, <clears throat> so I guess that um, there was a tornado that hit Chicago, um, Wrigley Field. But now it is very bright ish. But it has that, like, after the storm look. Kind of eerie look. And I think the sunset is probably going to be pretty. So there might be more footage coming. All right. Julian claims that he's going to come downstairs in a few minutes. He's talking to a friend on the phone. And we're sitting here with Stranger Things paused because we want to watch. And, um, little Miss Molly, well, we bought her a few things and she has everything on her bed and she's just like chewing and laying there. I'll show you. Molly. She's, she's like laying there. Hi. Hello. You've got your rope. You've got your hedgehog. You have your little Kong toy too. Yeah. She took every yeah, the teething ring. She took everything and just brought it to her bed. the The rope the rope was sitting in the middle of the floor, and she just dragged it onto her bed. <laughs> All right, we just watched a few episodes of Stranger Things. One and a half. Yeah. It's very long. It's terrifying. They finally, they finally decided. Story time. I was talking with my best friend, and she just started watching Stranger Things, and um, you can't see my eyes. So I'm gonna oh, you were talking to her? Yeah, she started watching. Stranger Did you Things. hear Gabriel in the background? Well, no, I was texting her, and it was, it was, okay. it was a few days. It was a few days ago. Oh, okay. But she did mention today that Gabriel and Logan were wrestling. Nice. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay. Um, Sorry. Back to your story. But I thought about it. And I realized that Stranger Things, all of the seasons, they change the type of horror genre that the series focuses on. The reason that me people say that season one is the best is because it uses the suspense. Hitchcock. The, 
fear of the unknown yeah. and that kind of horror with the monster. Mm -hmm. You don't really see it that much. When you do see it, it's a jump scare, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's, season that's the best kind. Yeah, it's really good. It's exactly. Uh, season two uses what, like, I haven't done a whole lot of research, but I call it terror, where you immediately know what the heroes are up against, and basically it's like dread. You're like, how are like, they ever going oh to? No, how are they ever oh going no. to beat this thing? Yeah. Like, it's it's unstoppable. How are they going to stop it? Mm -hmm. And they find a way. They have to find a way to stop it. Season three uses body horror, mm -hmm. which is, um, I guess. Actually, season four would use a little bit more body horror, <laughs> but they're slightly different with the way that the take they have on No spoilers. Season three is has a lot more gore mm -hmm. and a lot more blood. Yeah. But season four really leans into the old school classic. Yeah. Like, disgusting oh, horror. Like, it reminds me... Nightmare on Elm Nightmare Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. A hundred percent. The dream sequence. Everything, everything is like Nightmare on Elm mm -hmm. Street. And so... And so I, you know, it takes me back. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everybody that's my age that went to any sleepovers and watched any horror movies mm -hmm. are probably all saying, oh, that takes me back. The thing <laughs> is, I've, I'm not a horror geek. The only horror things that I know are Stranger Things and Five Nights at Freddy's because I'm a, I'm a youngin. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it's good. The horror is not quite my cup of tea, but I so far I'm really intrigued with the villain. Uh... I have some theories, mm -hmm. and I basically, if you follow Super Strange Trio at all, you'll know that I like Dungeons and Dragons, and the villain of this series is named off of a Dungeons and Dragons villain. Well, I guess the other ones were too, but this is like an, is the closest to the Dungeons and Dragons character. Yeah. It even looks like him. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. It is very cool. Final clip. Final clip. Final clip. All right. <sighs> yeah, so so there was a tornado somewhere today. Chicago. Chicago, and uh, we didn't see anything like that here. Um, but man, I'm tired, and it's gonna be another hot day tomorrow. Honor. And. <sighs> Julian's rehearsal was actually canceled tonight because he, they were supposed to have their rehearsal outdoors and the directors didn't want them to be in the middle of a thunderstorm because that was definitely forecast and they didn't want them to be it was a dance rehearsal so they did, didn't want them to be like dancing in heat indexes so um yeah we'll see what tomorrow brings so until tomorrow until tomorrow